Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RNK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, this week I want to talk about a little used tool that has got a lot of great ability if you know how to use it, and it's our Create Outlines tool. I love this tool. So we're going to look at it and look at the, a few different uses for it, and we're going to start out with a shape. I'm going to come in here to our shapes, and I'm just going to grab this butterfly real quick. Now with this butterfly, I want to create just the shape of a butterfly that maybe is repeated so I can quilt something or put something in the middle of it. So let's come up here to my Create Outlines tool. Now right now, this is just a piece of artwork. So I'm going to say Create Outlines, and I'm going to say let's do four outlines around here, and quarter inch apart is good. And so I'm going to say OK. And what this is going to do, and I picked Cascade, as you can see it's echoed it. Now right now, if we look in our sequence view, I have an artwork butterfly, and I have artwork outline. Well I really didn't want the butterfly in there, I just wanted it so I could echo the shape. So let's undo and I'm going to select the butterfly again and come back to my create outlines. Only this time I'm going to say remove the selection. Now it wouldn't matter if this was a piece of artwork or a design, it's going to remove whatever I'm echoing. So I'm going to say OK and I've still selected Cascade. So now it's going to create that same echo but it is going to remove the selection. So now let's just say I had uh, stitched some butterflies on a pillow or a placemat or a quilt and I came back later and I thought you know I'd really like to quilt around those. This would be the perfect way. You would pull the original design up, go ahead and echo it, and then you could hoop and go ahead and stitch around. Now the only problem is at this point we're still artwork. So we are going to have to convert the artwork. So select your artwork and come down to your one-click wonders. Now if I was going to just quilt, I would select that run stitch. So now I've got a single run. Or maybe I just want to do something decorative around every other one. I might select a motif run. Come in here and pick a cute little motif I would like to go around. And something like that, I'd want maybe a light motif. Let's see what we've got here. So we could do just a light little fun motif going around. Now let's get us a new piece of paper. Now another thing I love to use this for is I'm going to come in here to this custom shape and I'll just pick this car. And I'm going to go ahead and come to my one click wonders and I'm going to turn this car into a fill stitch. So now this is just a car and a fill stitch. But what I want to do is I want to border around this car. So with the car selected, I'm going to come up to my create outline. Now make sure you deselect remove selection. I'm going to say I want one repeat and I don't want any spacing. I want it to be right next to my car. And again, I'm going with cascade. I'll say OK. And now, if you notice in our sequence view, I have a little artwork outline. Well, now I can take that and I can turn that into a satin stitch. So I could create a border around something that was not bordered. So you could take a leaf, you could put a decorative border, you could put a satin stitch border, a run stitch border, whatever you want to do. But if you have anything you want to border that doesn't have a border on it, this is your answer. Create an outline at zero around it and then turn it into the stitches. That's another fun use of this. Now let's come in here. Let's go to my library. I'm going to go to November of 2016 under my free Floriani designs. So let's click on designs. Let's pull this turkey over. Okay, now I've got this turkey and I'm going to make some placemats. And I'm going to stitch him on, but I want him to be quilted. So I'm going to select all items. I'm going to select my whole turkey. 
I'm going to come up here to my create outlines. I'm going to say give him five repeats. And the spacing, I'm going to go ahead and make them a quarter an inch apart. I'm still staying with cascade. We'll look at spiral in just a moment. And I'm going to say OK. Now notice I didn't remove selection because I want this turkey to stay. So now let's fit this to screen. Click off. So now I'm going to have a turkey and he's going to be echoed, which is great. Only there still, if we come down here, look at it, it's still artwork. So let's select that. I'm going to turn that into a run stitch. I'm going to say I want it to be a bean, a triple. I'm going to leave it at three repeats. And I'm going to change that stitch length to about 3.5 because I am quilting through to do that. So now I've got a nice quilted little uh, run stitch mimicking my turkey like an echo quilt. So you can have a whole lot of fun with this. Now let's look at one other aspect of this. And let's pick just, um, oh, I guess it doesn't matter. We can pick that turkey again. Only this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select my create an outline. And I'm going to say spiral and say OK. Now what a spiral will do as soon as it generates here, let me fit it to the screen. It's going to have a start and it's literally going to spiral around and so it will have its two open ends because you have a spiral. So there are times when you would like that effect using decorative stitching for your outline around your objects. Now here's one other fun thing that I love this for. I'm going to come in here and get some text. I'm going to type in Dietza to put a name. I'm going to apply that. Now I will tell you, I want you to know text is very different. Notice the text has all kinds of control points on it. When it ha that's what makes it text. It's digitized in a different math method. It also is treated different. It's treated as one design with individual components that work together. So I can make this longer without making it taller. I can go ahead and kern, change the space in between. It's going to act different than a regular design. I can stretch it. I can actually take a letter right off the baseline but it is very very different. Now if I right click on it right now with all its control points it's going to give me some other things to play with. Do I want to change the path frame? Do I want a circle frame? Do I want it vertical? Do I want to come to some of the envelope options? So you can come in here and play with these things when you have your text and when it's got its control points on it. But what you cannot do is create an outline around it. So what I'm going to do is make it so I can. I'm going to come over to my left hand toolbar and I'm going to left mouse click on the select tool. Now notice all my control points went away. But if we look in my sequence view, my program still says, Kathy, this is text. So no matter what, I still don't have the ability to create an outline. What I'm going to have to do is make sure my text is exactly as I want it. I'm going to right mouse click on it and I'm going to break up that text. The minute I do that, my software now sees this as a design with seven different components, or six. So it's got six different components to it, so it's no longer a font, it's just a design and it's in the shape of a font. So now I could pick, deal with these individually. Or I can select them all and group them. And that's what I want to do in this case. I'm going to group this. Now what I want to do is I want to play with this and perhaps make an applique, put this on a bag. But what I want to do is I still want to mimic the word Dietza. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create an outline. I just want one. And I want it to be half an inch. 
and I want it to be a cascade. I don't want a spiral because I want it closed. And I'm going to say OK. So now I've mimicked my Dietza. I'm going to come down with that mimicked. I'm going to go ahead and come down and I'm going to turn that into an applique. Oops. Well, let me show you what I just did wrong. Let me undo as your friend. I still have everything selected. I needed to come down and select only the artwork. Now I can come down, left mouse click on my applique tool, and now I have created an applique. So what would happen is the word Dietza would stitch out, then I would have a placement line, a tack down line, and a finish line. So I could t make it, actually I could make a patch with the word Dietza doing it in this fashion. I could also um, take a piece of fabric that's a contrast to a towel. I might want to make Dietz a little bigger and take some contrasting cute fabric, stitch out the word Dietz, then go ahead and put my placement line on my towel, lay this down, and go ahead and finish the applique. A lot of times that is really cute on a towel and it looks real nice to have the applique fabric behind it. So this just gives you another avenue of fun that you can do. There's so much you can do, so many creative things you can do with your Create Outline tool. I hope you've learned something this week and I look forward to seeing you next week. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving.